McKinney hitting that shot at the buzzer. Wide open look. First shot on the way, and it's perfect by John Turner. Well, that's what the Dragons do. They're going to pass the ball around the horn, take their time, make sure everybody touch it, and look for the open shot. Bulldogs. Pretty impressive last night against Bram. Boy, they hit everything cooking. Montgomery over in the corner. That is Raymond back out on top to Nelson. He's had a nice tournament so far. Spear, the work around the perimeter, try to figure out this defense. Montgomery wants to attack. Litchfield, very solid defense. Montgomery sees an opening, and the left handed layup won't go. He gets up in the air, chases 6 4, a pretty good jumper. And John Turning, the 6'1 senior guard, who gives you about 11 points a game, starts the offense, cuts across down the middle, ball thrown out of bounds, knocked out of bounds by the Bulldogs. Dave Lee here with Richard Coffey and Tori Holt down along the sideline will join us in just a few minutes. Dragons with the basketball, no stranger to winning state championships. Not going to hurry any shots if they don't have to. Very patient. With the basketball. With Church gives it over again to Zach Kinney. And the 6-2 junior hits it. And they have a great combination. They're very patient on offense. And from a defensive perspective, you also have to be patient because if you gamble, they will burn you with a nice jump shot. Corey Spear was lighting it up in that first half last night. And that ball's going to sail out of bounds. Good effort down there, but to no avail. So turnover on Plainview Elgin Millville. Now, one thing the Dragons will do, they'll make you get impatient on defense and you'll go for a gamble and left them open for a great jump shot in the corner. So you have to be patient on defense uh, when you're playing against the Dragons. Whitchurch with the basketball. Off to Kinney. Turning. Leading score in the game last night for Litchfield had eight points. That gives you an idea how that game was played. They're very, very deliberate. Six nothing Dragons with the early lead and there's a mishandle and here comes Montgomery chase settles it down a little bit back to spear Raymond inside and as they try to go down low to six foot four Sam Ruth a foul is called closed captioning brought to you by Education Minnesota the state's educators union providing students with the skills they need to compete in the 21st century. And as you see here on the other end, Perm, they're just trying to get the ball to the basket as quick as they possibly can. One or two passes, and they're looking for a shot. Corey Spear open for three. Rebound. All down by last night's hero, Kenny. Quick look inside, and it's too hard. Travel on number 34. That's Riley Patter. Timeout on the court. Six nothing. Let's with the early lead. We've played about three minutes so far in this basketball game. The results speak for themselves. Building research into all that we do has brought innovation to our treatments. Tria carpal tunnel patients' recovery times are superior to those found in any other published reports. What if I said that of the wood harvested in Minnesota each year, more than twice as much is grown, resulting in more than twice as many trees today as there were 50 years ago, providing more than 30,000 jobs, quality paper, wood for building and manufacturing, and homes for millions of animals that depend on new growth. You'd probably think that we take care of the forest in Minnesota. And you'd be right. The innovative TRIA Acute Injury Clinic has fulfilled a need. Well, 96,384 needs. So when you get injured, just come in. Eight to eight, seven days a week. Go direct to the specialists. Get back to what you love to do. News and weather from every angle on 45 Local News at 9. This Minnesota State High School League broadcast is proudly supported by Touchstone Energy Cooperatives of Minnesota. Together we save.com. 
inside the friendly confines of the Target Center. Litchfield pitching the shutout up now 6-0 on PEM. And speaking of Litchfield, 6-3 senior Mitch Walleen had a tough go over the winter. Talked to his head coach, John Carlson. He was looking ill for some time, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. Initially went in and had a mono test, and it came back ne negative. So he continued to push through and play. By the time he tested positive for mono, which he had the entire time, he was already getting better. He never missed a beat. Coach Carlson says he's so tough. The only thing it did affect, though, was his conditioning. So they had to take advantage today of the TV timeouts to help them push through this game. That's incredible. And there he is right there. Yeah, Coming back into the game. That is an amazing story because Mono can really take you out. Six two Litchfield with the early lead in this state championship game. Well you see the uh, Bulldogs here with some full court pressure. They're just trying to speed the tempo. Uh, they don't want Litchfield to just come down and you know, play 30 40 minutes on offense. They're just trying to speed the tempo of the game up. That ball belongs to the Dragons. And that's Wolina on the bottom of that pile. John turning 6-1. Senior will throw the ball in bounds. He had four last night. He had 14 in the quarterfinals. But nobody scored much last night. Dragons with the basketball. Dylan Cole. And then knocked out of bounds. Turnover on the Dragons. They averaged 67 points a game. Plainview Elgin Millville averages 71 a game. Schools, as mentioned, are almost the exact same size enrollment wise. They have 478 down at PEM and 481 over at Litchfield. About an hour and 50 minutes west of the Metro here, playing Belgium Millville. About an hour and a half or so down south toward Rochester. Boy, that last crowd was so loud. We got another good turnout for this game, too. Both towns well represented. In case you missed it, Belgrade Bruton now Rosa won the state title undefeated. The third triple of the game for, and that's her, for, or for rather for uh, Whitchurch, and that's three. All the scoring coming from outside the arc. Well, Litchfield is shooting the ball extremely well right now. Nine to two early lead. Spear. Well, give and go. There's the defense of the Dragons reaching in, stopping that play, and here comes Turney. Or Kinney, rather. Knock loose. Ruth with a nice play down low. Corey Spear. And pushing that ball up, and it was Bo Nelson. Bo's had a very strong state tournament, and that was a strong move by Bo. Five point lead for Litchfield. They'll let that all, everybody get down there, and Witt Church will wait and set it up. Wolene going to go low post. Kinney, ball stripped out of his hands. That'll go back to the Bulldogs. A great, great job on defense from the Bulldogs on that series. And the Bulldogs, led by Corey Spear last night, he was so juiced up after that game. Boy, he played a, ha and in particular that first half, Richard. He had an awesome game last night. Let's see if he can duplicate that. See how they overload that side, quickly going to the middle, and Montgomery shot too much. But the follow is good by Ruth. Well, that's why they did such a great job at last night. The Bulldogs, they may not have connected on their first shot, but they did an excellent job at rebounding their second, second shot opportunity. Nine to six, making a bit of a run here. Litchfield Spears three pointer, too hard. And Kinney will come down in a hurry. Witcher from long range. That will not go. And that's not the pace that Litchfield wants to play. So let's see if they get back to their pace where they're setting it up and moving the ball around. Another three on the way, and that one's a little too hard. They hit 14 in the section finals outside the arc. Last night, I don't know if they attempted more than one or two. Well, so far today, they're letting it fly, but they're just not connected. They started off hot early, three of three, but they haven't hit one since. Kenny posting up down low. Ball knocked loose. I'll tell you right now, the Bulldogs doing, they're doing an awesome job at just getting their hands, deflecting the Dragons' passing. 
Nelson. Montgomery. That is Sam Ruth. He's six foot four. Groby into the game. Montgomery baseline and that little runner won't go tipped again and still won't go in another battle for it. Eventually ends up in the hands of the Dragons. No room for the timid under the board in this one. Into the ball game as well now is Tyler Larson that shot from the other side won't go. Good tip out but picked off by Spear he's got a two on one. Wow. Nice move by Spear. The defense never got back far enough to recover. And he just took the ball all the way to the hole. Turnover. Pressure defense. Timeout on the court. 9-8. Litchfield with the early lead. 10-38 to go in this first half. Coming up, man races zebra. 10 to 1 on the zebra. Guess who didn't win the internet race last night? CenturyLink. Yet again. Switch to Xfinity. It has speeds more than four times faster than CenturyLink. That means the fastest downloads, even when the kids are gaming online and the wife is Skyping the in-laws. Brad? I'm calling Xfinity. Uh, we're back in 10 seconds. Don't settle for old technology with CenturyLink. Get faster internet with Xfinity, the fastest internet provider in the nation, according to PC Mag. Sign up for this great offer. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. More appliance choices and more savings at Warner Stellion. Save $500 on this GE laundry pair. It's only $8.99. And this Frigidaire steam pair is only $12.99 after you save $400. Appliances for less through March 26th at Warner Stellion. Time is important. You can't buy it. And who couldn't use more? That's why 45 Local News at 9 is bringing you local news and your first forecast at a more convenient time. 9 o'clock every night of the week on 45. Hey, tournament fans, log on now to Prep 45 to order this or any of your favorite games. Make the memories of your favorite athlete last a lifetime with your own DVD copy of the Minnesota State High School Tournaments presented by Channel 45 and Grand Stadium. Your school plays here on 45. There's your state championship from uh, just an hour ago or so when Belgrade Brute and El Rosa completed an undefeated season. How tough is that? They're the only team in Minnesota that could do that this year. With the ball, the Bulldogs looking for their first lead of this game. Spear. That's Groby right back to Spear. Try that other side now. Into the ball game as well as Nick Shanks. Spear down in the land of the Giants, and the 5'10 guard puts it up and in. Puts Wait. his team ahead. Well, he just knows how to score. Did a great job at getting this balance and making sure there was no defenders around. Nice shot. Nice job by Spear. Groby with a foul. 8 0 run now. Well, I can tell you what Perm has done is extended their defense, trying to create a little pressure. Not necessarily trying to steal the ball. They just want to put Litchfield at a quicker pace so that the game can speed up because they don't want to play a slogan, a slowdown game. That pass. In Litchfield's backcourt, and it's uh, not easy getting it through this uh, pressure defense, but there they do it with Kinney. You see, this is all just pressure trying to speed Litchfield up. One point lead for Plainview Elgin Millville. That is turning on that side. Now we'll come back the other way. Cole. Low post action. Back out top and just too hard. Or is that? Yep, it came down on this side. And then a foul called as the ball was bouncing. And even Spears point up said, isn't that a violation? Well, Perm is doing a really good job with their defense right now. The shots that Litchfield are taking, they're not necessarily great shots there. They're two and three point, two and three feet behind the three-point line. And I think Perm will give Litchfield those shots all day long. A wide open underneath the basket, laying it up and easy is Joel Madsen. Well, that was a nice pass by his teammate to set him up for the easy lot, the easy layup. Spears picked up right away into the ball game is Luke Hugston for Plainview Elgin Millville. They'll go about four deep on their bench. Groby's shot is short. Litchfield with that ball on the baseline, and that runner won't go. And Groby chasing it down. He's got a two on one. Bounce pass. Points. Spears. A nice job 
finding his open teammate. And right now, the Bulldogs, this tempo favor the Bulldogs, the way things are going right now. Good pass to Turning. It could have been trouble right there. He recognized Turning right in the middle of the court near the midcourt line. Well, great job by Turning, not forcing that ball in, just bringing it back outside, getting something set up. And now they're playing their tempo where they're passing the ball around, looking for the open shot. Foul out top. On Plainview, Elgin Millville, they lead by one point. Some substitutions coming in, as you can see. Everybody trying to stay fresh. Dylan Cole will throw the ball inbounds for the Dragons and use that outlet on top for John Turning. To Zach Kenny, back to Turning, over to Dylan Cole. Cole guarded by Groby. There's a little backdoor effort, nothing there. Turning's open on the right. Not good that time. Groby chases down the rebound. Corey Spear with it. Traveling. That's good defense by the Dragons. During halftime of tonight's 4A championship game, one lucky fan's got a chance to replicate that shot that won the SP for its ingenuity. Time ticking down. Hop Harbor hits that shot. Everybody knows about it. And so tonight, a guy named Andrew Roy from Plymouth, who's probably at the gym right now trying to attempt that shot, will try to win some nice prizes here. And I think the fans are going to get a big kick out of it. And again, this press that the Bulldogs are in is strictly just trying to speed the tempo up of the Dragons. John Turney had 14 in the quarters and then had four yesterday. 12-11, Bulldogs with the lead. Turning will pop from that other side. He hit over there with a three to start the game. That one doesn't go. Rebound busts loose, and it ends up in the hands of Aaron Groby. Underneath, Shanks traveled. Well, that was a nice find by Groby to find his teammate under the basket, and then that extra pass was also the right pass, but the Bulldogs just traveled on the play. Dragons, they've got a break down underneath the basket, and it was tied up enough so they couldn't get it down. They had an easy layup, but a good defensive play by the Bulldogs. Well, I like what the Bulldogs are doing right now. They're speeding the game up with their defense. Kenny can't find the range. Montgomery, he'll push it down. Spear was down court, couldn't get it to him. There's Spear, he'll pop the three, and he is fouled, and the ball won't go, but he's going to shoot three shots as John Turning picks up the foul. A coach's worst nightmare, fouling a jump shooter, and not only in this case a jump shooter, but a three-point jump shooter. So now he goes to the line uh, shooting three. Cardinal Sin never foul a jump shooter. The 70% free throw shooter has a seventh point. He led his team in scoring last night. And he's off to a good start tonight. Average of 16 a game. But he'll get another one here now. He got three coming. Corey is pretty fired up after the game last yes, night. He wasn't was he? extremely fired up. He had a right to be. He played a heck of a game. Bulldogs, four points over Litchfield in the state championship game from the Target Center. about saving energy but somehow she just knew your touchstone energy cooperative can teach you how to save energy and money at togetherwesave.com this message is brought to you by minnesota's touchstone energy cooperatives 
Join Menards this week in saluting our American-made products with Menards Made in the USA sale. Sylvania has been manufacturing light bulbs since 1901. Made in Winchester, Kentucky. Two packs of halogen indoor-outdoor flood bulbs in three wattages are just $6.98. Protect your vehicles with old-world automotive products. Made in Bedford Park, Illinois, this peak global lifetime antifreeze and coolant combination helps protect any vehicle. $4.99 after rebate. Save big money at Menards. The Fan Cam is brought to you by Tria Orthopedic Center, bringing innovation to patient care for extraordinary results. Plainview, Elgin, Millville, a 13 to 2 run over the last six minutes and 20 seconds. Well, ever since they changed their defense to a full court press, it's been forcing the tempo. And I think right now the Dragons are a little uncomfortable with the tempo of the game. Montgomery kicks it away. Litchfield has tried nine three-pointers in this game, Richard. Four so far on the two-pointers. Wow. But a lot of that has to do with the defense that the Bulls are the playing. And they ran and they hit those first three, as you mentioned. You get it across just in time and back out of the top in the hands of Poles. Kenny had an open look, but he saw a better shot for his teammate over there. And it's no good, but a rebound and a very strong rebound by Mitch Wallin. Well, Wallin did an awesome job of positioning himself to get that rebound and then took his time, gather his balance to go up for a strong two points. Mike Barnes has entered the game for the Bulldogs. That's Groby. Ruth right to the basket. Hangs on the lip, won't go in. Kinney saw that opening, boy, he just took it. Nice job. Again, these players are really smart. They're going to take what the defense gives them. And on that time, the Bulldogs never stopped the ball handle. He just drove all the way to the basket. A foul and a basket for Bo Nelson. And for Bo, he's got uh, 34 points in the tournament so far. Well, we saw him in the semifinal games hit this shot right here over and over. He's a good jump shooter and got fouled in the process on this. Dylan Cole picks up the personal. Nelson hits his fifth point of the game. Litchfield against the pressure. Kenny up to turning and put to cover back. Well, the Bulldogs get down in a hurry, so there's no fast breaks. So they do. Along the baseline and wide open was Wallin, and he was fouled. He'll go to the line now and shoot a couple. Mitch Wallin, 11 points a game. He's a senior, and you heard the story. Tory told about him a few minutes ago. There's Kirk Thompson. Yep. First free throw of the game for the Litchfield Dragons. Plainview's been there four times. Nobody's missed. Eighteen sixteen. Bulldogs with the lead and the basketball. Bowen Nelson, Aaron Groby, and it's Sam Ruth. We go back out to Chase Montgomery and then to Bowen Nelson. So everybody has touched it who's on the court. Well, maybe not Mike Barnes. Mike cuts through the middle there. Ruth will just back it up and shoot it. Too hard. Good defense on that series by the Dragons. Goal. This is turning. There you go. That's what they want to do. The Dragons want to be extremely patient. They're not going to force a rush. Any shots. Wallin. Turning covered up quickly by Barnes. And then right back out to the top. Well, this is what they do. They're going to make you play defense. Hopefully you... You know, they're trying to make you uh, get tired or make a mistake on defense, and then they're going to uh, take that shot once you get a little tired. Kenny on D. And that's exactly what they do right there, Dave. They almost lull you to sleep on defense until you make a mistake, and then they have good shooters all around the court. Sam Ruth, wide open Chase Montgomery. 
McKinney with the rebound a chance to regain the lead here that they started out with to start this basketball game and then loses a dribble. And timeout on the court. 18's on the scoreboard for both teams here in the first half of the state title game. Two A. Innovation starts with bright ideas. The same surgeons who brought Tria Orthopedic Center to life were among the first in the country to bring the light of arthroscopic surgery to the forefront. Tria physicians have shared their quest for excellence through textbooks, journal papers, and fellowship training to hundreds of specialists around the world. All that research, education, and innovation is put into practice every day. So you can get back to what you love to do. More appliance choices and more savings at Warner Stellion. This stainless steel dishwasher by GE is only $4.99. Save $600 on this KitchenAid stainless steel French door refrigerator. It's only $16.99. Appliances for less through March 26th at Warner Stellion. The classic moments you'll never forget. Are you still master of your domain? My boys can swim! Seinfeld is called the number one greatest show of all time. Get Seinfeld. Weeknights at 8 and 8.30 on 45. In last year's Class 2A final, the Perm Yellow Jackets were playing without Zach Gabbard, who suffered cardiac arrest earlier in the season. Well, after a slow first half for both teams, Perm found the groove as Jordan Cressup scored 12 points, and teammate Nick Topkin led the Yellow Jackets attack with 15 as they beat the Eagles 45 to 37, winning their first state title in their very first state tournament. Uh, those that didn't play in that game, he was doing the big inspiration for that team to go on and win the state championship last year. We saw him at the game here today, as Richard mentioned, and we'll see Jarvis Johnson later today for De La Salle. Very similar situation. Yes. Tie ball game under three and a half to go now until halftime. Litchfield and Plainview, Elgin Millville. Loose ball, turnover in the hands of the Dragons from the Wright County Conference. Dylan Cole to Whitchurch. Zach, who's a 6'1 junior, looks over to the right side, saw Kenny, and Montgomery got his hand in there and called the cops. He just stole that ball. <laughs> yes, he did. And right now, I'm a little surprised because yesterday the Dragons showed a lot more patience on offense. Today, they're, they're kind of not found that tempo yet offensively that they had yesterday so we'll see if they can discover that because they played they, they played and used that tempo so well yesterday in the victory Ruth easy turnaround off the glass Sam Ruth has six but well, that was just such a nice nice soft touch by Ruth for the bank turning trying to get everybody set up here Kenny he won the game last night. Just a dramatic shot right at the buzzer to send this team to the state championship game. Going to move it around. Well, this is a good offensive possession for the, for the Dragons. This is what they like to do. Look at that. That's Spear. He anticipated that like a cornerback in a football game. Yes, he did. He saw that coming from a long way. He probably came from about 10 feet. To steal that ball, he just that was just great anticipation by Spear to come up with that steal. Head coach John Carlson calls a timeout as the Bulldogs regain the lead at 22 to 18. Look at Spear, he read this from the very beginning. Uh, he came probably from about 10 feet to, uh, to, to make this steal, and the whole time he just anticipated that that was going to be a pass and a great job at stealing it. Get the news and weather first every night on 45. Local news at 9 p.m. on Channel 45. Your school plays here. I still think right now, Litchfield have to find their tempo. And for them, that would be the same tempo that they played with in yesterday's semifinal game. Now, what the Bulldogs are doing is putting a lot of full court pressure on Litchfield, kind of speeding up the game. And they're not necessarily trying to come up with the steals, but they're just trying to get the tempo a little faster. And so far, it's been working. Tyler Larson pushing it up a little faster. He's a 5'10 senior. So the foul goes on uh, Corey Spear. He picks up number one. Good turnout here. Again, for the 2A, just an awesome crowd in the first one as well. Ooh, almost picked off out there by Raymond. Turning has it, safe and sound. 
Off to Tyler. Larson. Down to a minute 41 to go now. And a whistle and a foul inside. And it'll probably be on Corey Spear again. Another push call as he got a piece of Whitchurch. Well, that's two for him, and they cannot afford for him to get in foul trouble. So he picked up his second foul with a minute and 38 to go in the first half. Oh, yeah, that was uh, that was an out ball. And uh, the referee saw that, but uh, again, he didn't think he fouled. It's, uh, it's amazing, so many of these kids, when they create these fouls, and they look at the referee like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> well, you're a father of teenagers. You should be used to that. <laughs> Well, I have two daughters that, that play, and they never foul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. Boy, they are good players, Richard. You got a couple dandies there. Oh, it was fun. It was a fun state championship for them. <laughs> Nia and Sydney Coffey both going to play at uh, D1 level. It's exciting. Well, the ball goes out of bounds, and Litchfield uh, three points down with the ball back now, and it'll be inbounded by Tyler Larson. Larson going to kick it out to the top. That is Dylan Cole guarded tightly by Grovey. Larson gets it right back. Both defenses pretty darn tenacious. Quick passes around the perimeter, and this is where they're most effective at. Montgomery laying in wait for that one, and then fall from behind by Larson. There's Coach Carlson. He's had wonderful success at Litchfield. State champs in 2000, 2002, 2003. I think on that play, Kenny just got a little impatient trying to get a basket. Um, his teammate was cutting to the basket. He was trying to get a back cut, but the uh, defense for the Bulldogs was right there waiting on that play. And now you got the Dragons with some full court pressure. You don't see that very often from them. Montgomery with the inbound pass. Now, Braham had great pressure. One of the things that the Bulldogs did last night is they really broke it much easier, I think, than most people anticipated. No, they have excellent ball handlers at every position, so it's easy for them to break the press. Powerful move by Bo Nelson. And that's just an example right there of their four and five guys being able to handle the basketball. Moline fouled. That's one of the things you break that press fast, and you've got that layup waiting for you. Nelson picks up the foul. Mitch Wolling gets to shoot a couple. Battling mono through the course of the year, as you heard uh, Tory talk about. And, and, and not missing a, a, a practice or a game, that's just amazing. Yeah. Into the ball game, Nick Shanks is back. Montgomery will take a break. Not Montgomery, but that's him under the basket. With the basketball now, Groby of Plainview, Elgin, Millville. Montgomery shot not going to go. And on the boards, nobody was going to take that away from the <laughs> six foot junior, Dylan Cole. No, that was a strong rebound by Cole. It'll have been a new version of blood on the court by Dylan. <laughs> sort of blood on the tracks. There's a shot that won't go. Rebound hauled down by Shanks. Slowly down. Eric Raymond. Man to man defense from Litchfield to Groby, and the ball is up for grabs. Raymond ends up with it back. Fade away. Shot right before time runs out. Will not go. Final for the halftime score 24 to 20. The Bulldogs with a halftime lead in this game, and it has been a little slower pace, Richard. Yes, it has, but I tell you, the Bulldogs, they, they're just not the same without Spear on the basketball court leading the way for them. So, in the second half, he's going to have to make sure that he doesn't get in foul trouble because they need him on the court. And for the Dragons, they just never really found their offensive tempo like they had in the uh, semifinal game. So, I'm sure at halftime, um, the coach, Coach Carson, will try to get them in a better tempo 
Bowl here for the second half. Torrey's down along the sideline with Kirk Thompson of Plainview Elgin Millville. Yeah, thanks. I'm with Kirk Thompson. Uh, Coach, uh, you got the lead right now at half. Do you like the pace of this game, or would you like to kick it up even at more of a notch? Uh, I think we'd like to kick it up a little bit more. We're struggling right now. You know, I, I think we had such a good game last night. It's kind of tough coming back, but we're, we're hanging in there, and we just got to have to persevere the second half to have a chance of winning. Yeah, it was a tough game last night. Plus, it was a late game. You have a quick turnaround, all of a sudden getting back here this morning. Is anything extra going to that? You know, it's it's something you got to do, and, and we're not going to make an excuse. We're, we're going to play ball and, and, and try to get the win here. But, you know, Litchfield's playing very well, good, tough team. But we're going to keep after them. All right, Coach. Appreciate your time. Good luck in the second half. All right, thanks a lot. All right, Kirk Thompson, guys. Thank you, Tory Kirk out of Winona State. John Carlson out of St. Cloud State. And the Dragon, we're not sure where that came from. But it's fun <laughs> to have it here, I can tell you that. A lot to come at halftime. Stay tuned. Litchfield and Plainview El Jamilville making some another great game here. A four-point spread at halftime. We pledge to give our students a voice in the school funding debate. We're teachers. We see what a decade of underfunding has done to schools and colleges. Students are being crowded into some of the largest class sizes in the nation. Making it hard for us to spend one-on-one -on -one time with them. And even harder to give students and our state the skills we need to compete. Speak up for students. Sign our pledge at iraisemyhand.com. Concussions have doubled in recent years. A concussion is a traumatic brain injury and can happen in any sport. I'm Dr. Amy Kohler, an emergency physician at North Memorial Healthcare and a hockey mom. Every athlete should have a baseline concussion test before playing any sport and should be seen by a doctor following a head injury. Things to watch for are headaches, vomiting, confusion, and dizziness. For over 50 years, North Memorial has been treating head injuries through our primary care clinics, level one trauma center, and statewide emergency medical services. When it comes to concussions, see your doctor and play it safe. Hi, I'm Nick, and I'm making my story. At North Hennepin, you can make your own schedule. It's so close to home, and it's so convenient. North Hennepin is the true definition of acceptance. There's a place for everyone. The teachers are passionate about what they do here. I'm going to be a dentist. I'm going to be a graphic designer. Check out North Hennepin. It will open doors for you, like it did for me. I made the right choice by coming here. I'm making my story. Make yours today. At North Hennepin Community College. Call or check it out online. I love this place. He's a delivery guy with a big future. I hope to be still delivering packages only in a hovercraft, huh? She's his loving wife. Please believe me when I tell you this. You smell. And he's the happy-go-lucky father-in-law. So angry, I could spit. Okay, mission accomplished. <laughs> Put them all together. How dare you? How dare you? All right, let's just get the fight going. The King of Queens, comedy that delivers. Eight nights at 6 and 6.30 on 45. Ladies and gentlemen, it's celebration time at the Target Center. And today's celebration honors the 2012 AAA Award winners for their achievements in the classroom, the arts, and in athletics. Now, the AAA Award goes to high school seniors who have a 3.0 or higher grade point average and who participate in league-sponsored athletic and fine arts activities. The award is sponsored by Fairview Sports and Orthopedic Care, the Institute for Athletic Medicine, and AAA Minneapolis. Awarding these medals to these outstanding students today are Mindy Sparby, president of the Minnesota State High School League's Board of Directors, Heidi Richards of Fairview Sports and Orthopedic Care, and Rod Shilkrat of AAA Minneapolis. They will be assisted by Dave Stead and Jody Redman of the Minnesota State High School League. And now the 2012 Academic Arts and Athletic Award finalist. Representing Region 1A, Molly Dunlap of La Crescent High School. And Trevor Akazin of Pine Island High School. Representing Region 2A, Katie Kuiper of St. Peter High School. And Sean Murphy of Nicollet High School. Representing Region 3A, Max Dibble of Boda High School. Representing Region 4A, Katie Nordic of Providence Academy. 
and Riley Gale of West Lutheran High School. Representing Region 5A, Leah Peterson of Onemia High School. And Preston Weber of Piers High School. Thank you very much. Representing Region 6A, Kendra Spindle of Hancock High School. Representing Region 7A, Kate Shellerud of Esco High School. And Drew Johnson of Masami East High School. Thank you. And representing Region 8A, Samantha Lee of Winnemac High School. Davis Mills of Stephen Argyle Central High School. Representing Region 2 AA, Michaela Moore of Hutchinson High School. And Daniel Bach of Mankato West High School. Representing Region 3 AA, Marin Lowe of Apple Valley High School. And Arthur Harris of Bloomington Jefferson High School. Representing Region 4 AA, Erica Stormick of Woodbury High School. And Eric Corcoran of Stillwater Area High School. Representing Region 5 AA, Kristen Nordby of Centennial High School. And Jonathan Dill of Maple Grove High School. Representing 6 AA, Anna Jerpy of Robindale Armstrong High School. And Josh Thorson of Wyzetta High School. Representing Region 7 AA, Carly Peterson of Grand Rapids High School. And Benjamin Nault Mauer of Cambridge Isani High School. And representing Region 8 AA, Heidi Nelson of Detroit Lakes High School and Samuel Coos of Bricari High School. And now the 2012 State Academic Arts and Athletic Award goes to representing Region 3A, Katie Ellingworth of Redwood Valley High School. <laughs> representing Region 6A, DJ Klein of Battle Lake High School. Representing Region 1 AA, Savannah Wonderlick of Owatonna High School. And representing Region 1 AA, Kirk Bushy of Rochester Century High School. The Minnesota State High School League will award a $4,000 scholarship to Katie, DJ, Savannah, and Kirk. Please join the league and congratulate these students for their outstanding achievements. Let's give them a big hand. More appliance choices and more savings at Warner Stellion. This kitchen suite from Frigidaire Gallery is only $27.99. And this four-piece buy suite is only $37.99 after you save $600. Appliances for less through March 26th at Warner Stellion. In a time when budgets are being cut for our schools, parks, and other important programs, we believe commitment to our communities is more vital than ever. And that's why every day, our people give thousands of hours to the communities we serve. 1.3 million just last year. That's what we call Banker's Hours. Wells Fargo, with you when your community needs a hand. To find out how we can help in your community, visit wellsfargo.com. Invest wisely. Invest in yourself. Century College. The crowds are getting bigger at Toyota's number one for everyone sales event. People know it's a great time to save on our best-selling cars, like Camry, the number one selling car in America, and Corolla, a 2012 IIHS top safety pick. Come check out all our amazing deals today. 
Everyone else is. Right now, you can lease a new 2012 Corolla for only $159 a month. Plus, every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, a complimentary maintenance plan with roadside assistance. Hurry in. It's the one event you don't want to miss. Family time is important, and Minnesotans don't let anything get in their way. So now they can get news at a convenient time to make more time for family. Live every night of the week on 45 Local News at 9. Halftime is brought to you by Tria Orthopedic Center, bringing innovation to patient care for extraordinary results. Welcome back inside the Target Center. Tori Old back once again with the AAA Award winner. Some of our students here, DJ Klein is here from Battle Lake High School. We also have Katie Ellingworth out of Redwood Valley High School. Savannah Wunderlich is here from Owatonna. And Kirk Bushy from Rochester High School. And Kirk, I want to start with you. Congratulations, first off. Uh, what does this award mean to you? Thank you very much. This award is a great honor. I'm really proud to be representing all those great kids and be with these great people right here. What are some of the activities that you're involved with? Um, I play tennis, uh, basketball, track and field, and dance team. And I'm, in, I'm involved in various music activities. Savannah, what are some of the activities that you're involved with as well? Um, I'm in cross country and track and also band and choir. And DJ, what are, uh, what are some of your future plans? Uh, I plan to, you know, go to college. I'm going to Hamlin University in St. Paul and plan to study possibly music or science or math. Not really totally decided, but yeah, it'll be fun. Maybe, maybe you can get in the band, but yeah. you can learn from them and not play right as an interview is about to go. Hey, we appreciate all of you and congratulations once again. This is our AAA award winners. We'll go check in over at the set with Chris. All right, Tori, thanks a lot. Back again with Leah B. Olson and Trent Tucker, Plainview, Elgin, Millville, leading Litchfield 24-20. Leah, PEM, Corey Spear, 11 points. He's picking up right where he left off yesterday. He looks really good out there, and he's moving the ball, looking really confident. And, boy, if they can really stay on, get some more rebounds in the second half, I think their game's going to be doing really well. Last night's hero, Zach Kinney, seven points for Litchfield so far. Pick up the first half highlights. Trent, here we go, Litchfield. Well, this field is playing the style of basketball. They want to play the tempo is where they want the tempo to be. But they have to take care of the basketball better in the second half if they want to win this basketball game. And you see PEM here attacking the basket pretty successfully for the Bulldogs, Leah. Yeah, that's what they've been doing well. And the pace hasn't been too slow for them. They've, get, they've been able to get out in the fast break and really get a lot of points off turnovers as well. That was Corey Spear mentioned he's leading. And we have today's stats brought to you by Century College. Invest wisely. Invest in yourself at Century College. Trent? The plain view, 14 points off a tournament. Yeah. This field cannot afford to have that happen in the second half if they want to have a chance to win the state championship. All right, we're going to check in with Tria Orthopedic Center to learn more about the complicated issue of growing pains. Then we will be right back with the second half. I'm here with Dr. Heather Thorner, a primary care sports medicine expert with the Acute Injury Clinic at TRIA. Dr. Thorner, do growing pains really exist? You know, this can be a very complicated issue for families that are trying to decide if their child's pain is indicative of more serious injury. There are several conditions that occur during periods of growth that are important to evaluate for and treat. So what are some of the common causes of growing pains? Well, growing pains often happen during periods of high growth and with high levels of activity. A few important causes are we believe when the muscle and tendon grow at a different rate than the bone. Osgood Schlatter and Seavers disease, for example, occur when the growth plate is overstressed from the growing muscle. So what are some of the areas that you look for? Common places to have growth issues are in the foot and heel, in the knee, as well as in the hip. So how should parents at home diagnose these conditions? Anytime your child has ongoing pain, you should seek medical consultation. A sports medicine professional can evaluate for and treat several of the important issues. The results won't come back. I hope they catch that guy. That guy? No, not till later in the season. Wait, what? Uh, are you catching up without me? No. Yes. Xfinity has all the latest episodes online, and their internet's like crazy fast. Anything else you want to spoil? Your surprise party's tomorrow. See what you've been missing with satellite. Switch to Xfinity for $99 a month for two years with Showtime and stars included. Plus, ask how you can get up to $250 back. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. 
I chose to come to Inverhills Community College because they have a reputation for creating great paramedics. Inverhills is a nationally recognized and nationally accredited program. You put that down on your resume and it really means something. After graduation, I want to work as a paramedic firefighter for St. Paul. Inverhills has given me the tools to succeed. Emergency medicine is just one of over 50 career programs and certificates offered at Inverhills. Register for our college preview event April 12th to learn more. Let's go back down courtside. Here's Torrey with the head coach's moments ago. With Coach John Carlson of Litchfield right now, you wanted to make sure you came out and controlled the tempo of the game. How comfortable are you right now with the tempo of this game? Well, I, we're, we're comfortable with the tempo. We're not comfortable with the turnovers. We've had a lot of turnovers. We're not moving the ball. We're not, you know, we're uh, we're not moving the ball well enough and uh, attacking the basket. And uh, we're not shooting well either. So, all right, we appreciate your time. Good luck in the second half. John Carlson, head coach of Litchfield, right now facing a little bit of a deficit. Well, we get ready to go here with the ball in the hands of the Litchfield Dragons, but it's close as it has been this whole game, 24 to 20, and the Bulldogs with the lead. Litchfield had the early lead, so it kind of gives you an idea of what's happening here in this second championship game of the day. Well, as Coach Carson just mentioned, he's happy with the tempo, but they're just having a little trouble getting in sync from an offensive per perspective. Litchfield working the ball around. A real low scoring game last night. The leading score had eight points, but they got the victory at the buzzer. Very controlled offense. With the basketball, Dylan Roll and try to work out that backdoor play to Turney. Nothing there. So the shot on the way from the left side looked like it was going to get there, but just a little bit short for Whitchurch. And Ruth will clear it off and hand it to Corey Spear. He's open for three. He took that yesterday. Now falling back, takes a tough shot there, and the rebound knocked out of bounds. And who's it off of? Uh, Plainview Elgin Millville. Well, I think he had a better first shot that he turned down because when he when he did turn it down, he kind of went into the defense and ended up shooting a uh, fadeaway three-pointer. And those don't fall very often. Knock loose. Great hustle by Raymond. Spear. Another rebound for Litchfield. Both teams not shooting very well. Trying to go for the steal. A lot of turnovers here so far with that great defensive pressure. Wolene who's having a nice game that time unable to get that shot off. 6-4, 6-4, 6-2, 10 for the Bulldogs. And then you're going 6-6-1, 6-1, 6-2, 6-3, 4-4. <laughs> Litchfield's Dragons. Kicking the ball. I'll just redo that one. Well, this has been a, a, a game about defense because so far both teams are really having trouble finding the range from an offensive perspective. We'll see if if that can't change here in the second half and see if someone can catch on fire. Four point lead no points yet in this second half. Raymond over to Spear for three too hard. Rebound hauled down by Litchfield and then going for the strip with Spear. I think he just picked up his third fall, Richard. Yes, he did. And he has to be careful with that. He cannot afford, as I mentioned in the first half, he can't afford to get in foul trouble. The Bulldogs really need him on the court. He, he does a great job at controlling and running this team with his ball skills and leadership. He just has to be smarter than that. He picked up a third foul. Now he's on the bench again. Oh. Raymond on him and now a fall called on Raymond. Raymond got a little, little too aggressive out top there. A lot of body in the referee. Easy call for the referee. Ball being bounded by John Turning. And he gives it off to Dylan Cole. And here comes Dylan now. 2000, 2002, and three. John Carlson guided these guys to a state title. So he knows what it's all about. And you heard him talk a little bit at halftime on what they need to do differently. A steal again by the Bulldogs. Bulldogs come in here unseated, by the way. 
So you, and when that happens, you come in with that little bit of a chip on your shoulder. You're ready to prove some people that you deserve to be ranked higher. You are exactly right, Dave. They come in with a little edge and trying to prove a point. Bo Nelson is having a really nice tournament. Well, he's a, he's a, he's, he plays the five spot for them, but he's great at putting the ball on the deck and taking two or three dribbles. And that was a nice kiss off the glass by Bo. Man all alone, it's Wolene. The fake gives him time to put the ball up and in. Mitch has seven. What well, a great job by the Dragons, recognizing that the press was all up front. And they threw over top of the press and ended up with an easy layup. Montgomery, the spin move off the glass. He's pretty good at that shot. It won't go there. Kenny held his position. Now Zach dishes to Wolene, and he is fouled by Eric Raymond. Timeout on the court. Four point game. Bulldogs lead the Dragons in the second half. Join Menards this week in saluting our American made products with Menards made in the USA sale. Sleep in comfort with a new mattress from Serta. For more than 80 years, Serta has been producing the world's best mattress. Made in Beloit, Wisconsin, the Perfect Treasure Queen mattress set is only $349. Or save $100 on the Excalibur Mega Eurotop Queen mattress set. It offers additional softness, support, and ultimate comfort. Just $699. Save big money at Menards. More appliance choices and more savings at Warner Stellion. Take advantage of the early start to grilling season with a great deal on a new grill, like this Weber gas grill. It's only $3.99. Appliances for less through March 26th at Warner Stellion. Time is important. You can't buy it. And who couldn't use more? That's why 45 Local News at 9 is bringing you local news and your first forecast at a more convenient time. 9 o'clock every night of the week on 45. The second half is brought to you by Inver Hills Community College. Inver Hills Community College salutes student athletes. Inver Hills, define, believe, achieve. Minnesota Basketball Coaches Association has their All-Star Basketball Series coming up on the gold team. Some of the guys we've seen in this tournament, Johnny Woodard out of Duluth East, Austin Poland out of Grand Rapids, Nate Meyer from Cold Spring Recorey, then on the Maroon Squad, we have Dwight Anderson, Washburn, we'll see him tonight. Ryan Sarla from Lakeville North. We'll see him late. Uh, Joey King was here with Eastview and just a few of the kids. One of the kids we saw in the last game, Connor Goodwin, and also Zach Houston will both be playing, but they'll be playing on different teams. So that's coming up here at the end of the month. No, that should be a, a really fun game. Wide open look in that corner. Just will not go. Rebound by the Dragons underneath and maybe one too many passes, but the ball is knocked out of bounds off. Of the Bulldog. But at least like, I like what the Dragons are doing right now. They're great at passing the ball around, taking their time, waiting for the defense to make a mistake, and usually they end up with an open shot. And although they missed that shot, it was a great offensive possession by them. Dylan Cole with the basketball to the corner of that free throw line to Kenny. Zach right to the basket. There's a reason why they had him in the ball in his hands at the end of the game last night so he could make that shot. Well, that was a great recognition by Kenny, realizing that he had a lean to the basket, and he took advantage of it. Plainview Elgin Millville with the ball and a whistle and a fall on Aaron Groby as he ran through a screen. Well, this right here was... Um, <laughs> I don't know if that was too much of a hard pick. Might have been a little acting job there, but uh, nevertheless, it turns out in the Dragons' favor. Against the pressure, Kenny will play a little catch with Tyler Larson and then bring it back up and to Wolene under the basket. Shot won't go. Ruth with the rebound bounces right in the hands of Eric Raymond. Wow, that was good defense by the Bulldogs. Three point. Uh uh. Got a fast break going here for Litchfield. And suddenly putting his head down and just going right to the hoop once he got past his man. John turning. We're tied up. Well, nice job by John. The defense is slow to get back. And he saw an opportunity just to take the ball all the way to the hole. And that's exactly what he did. Good crowd assembled here at Target Center, downtown Minneapolis. Nice day in the Twin Cities. Good chance to come out here and watch some history, perhaps. And those two guys by themselves are worth the price of admission. I wonder if that dragon can fly. Have you seen him fly today yet? 
I wouldn't challenge the, the dragon of flying. Well, there you see Litchfield's name, Richard, and uh, among the list of state champs. Well, Litchfield is no stranger to the tournament here. They've won a couple state championships, and some of the other schools we have listed there. What a great opportunity for these kids to make it this far and have another opportunity to play for a uh, state title. Yeah, New London Spicer. I want them to get back so we can see their band again. They had yeah. that great band. They had an awesome band. 26-26. Bulldogs with the ball not a ton of scoring taking place in this game pass down along the baseline traveling. Oh no foul foul. That's the cause the travel. Yep, and I think that was the right call. There was a lot of body contact down low and the referee made the right call. Moline has two. This is Ruth using his height to his advantage. Well the one thing about the Bulldogs the Bulldog big men there they often dribble. They all can put the ball on the floor and create a shot for themselves. Larson give and go. Tyler has two. And that's just basic one on one basketball right there. Great job by the Dragons. Into the ball game, Luke Hugston, number 15. This is Chase Montgomery high in the air. Again, too much power on the shot. Kenny's got a three on two break. Bounce pass picked off. What a play by Ruth. I thought that was a pretty good pass there. And Ruth saw it coming. Bulldogs with the ball. All tied up at 28. It's up for grabs. Montgomery picks it up. That is Ruth. That is Groby. Ruth, he wants to go to the hoop. And he got caught as he was driving in. And that's a Mitch Wallin. And that's, I think, Mitch's fourth foul, or third foul, rather. And he's six foot three. They need his height. Well, right here, Roof does a great job at stripping the ball out before the shooter can get it up in the air. And on the other end, Roof is, uh, is a very tough guard for the Dragons' defense because, again, I think he plays a five position, but he's really quick with the basketball, and he can dribble extremely well. So that's causing a problem for the Dragons. Hugstead back out on top, Montgomery. Go around the other way now. Spear. He's got three fouls in the game. That's why you haven't seen a ton of him. Ruth. Quick move to the basket, and he's fouled by Tyler Larson. Again, I just finished speaking about that. Ruth is playing the five position. He's doing a great job at putting the back, putting the ball on the floor, creating some difficult opportunities to defend him for the Dragons. Oh, Hugston almost lost it there. And then as he drives to the basket, he picks up yet another foul, and this one's on Dylan Cole. But that might be the third or fourth foul on this possession for the Dragons. They got to get a little smarter on defense. They can back off just a little and start moving their feet more. Right now, they're playing a lot of body defense, and that would always lead to a foul. On the top, Spear won't take the screen, goes the other way instead, and backs it up, wants to shoot the three, and it's not going to go. And with a nice rebound down there to put it up and in is Luke Hudstead. Hudstead just in the right place at the right time. Back up by two of the Bulldogs. This is for the state championship. Larson. Journey. That looks good. That's the shot they're looking for. Great job by the Dragons passing the ball around until they found the open man. A one point lead for the Dragons. Ruth in traffic. Followed with the two shots. Ruth right now is just putting a lot of pressure on the Dragons defense. And this is what the Dragons does so well. Passing the ball around, let everybody touch it. Open shot for Taryn, and he knocked it down. Sam Ruth, five team falls now for Litchfield. It doesn't matter. This is a two shotter right here. Ruth is a 62% free throw shooter. Back in the game, Nick Shanks, Chase Montgomery will go out. Chase has been held scoreless in this game. And Litchfield defense. And the Bulldog defense, both very good. Can't get either one to fall. It remains a one-point lead for the Dragons. 
Coming off an inspiring win last night on a last second shot by Kinney. There he is right there. Last night's hero looking inside. Back out to Cole, the junior. Tierney trying to break in, didn't get there in time. The pass didn't. Pater. And this is what the Dragons do so well. They can be very patient. They're, they're waiting for the defense to make a mistake. They're waiting for the defense to give them an open. Foul on Hudson. Time out in the court. Litchfield by a point. Hi, I'm Liam. And I'm Kiana. We know what it's like to have our number one fan miss all of our games. When our dad is gone, our mom looks to our local Yellow Ribbon Network to help with things that our dad usually takes care of. And the network has always been there. Hi, I'm Todd Baxter of the Minnesota Swarm. I want to challenge each and every Minnesota company to join the Yellow Ribbon Network in your community. By doing so, you can support military families and employ today's veteran. You can also join the Minnesota Swarm in honoring military families March 30th for Heroes Night at the Hive. The classic moments you'll never forget. Are you still master of your domain? My boys can swim! Seinfeld is called the number one greatest show of all time. Get out! Seinfeld. Weeknights at 8 and 8.30 on 45. 45. Relive all your favorite moments of the Minnesota State High School League tournaments with your own DVD. To order your copy, log on to prep45.com. Your team plays here. 45. 45. Today's game summary being brought to you by Toyota dealers. Visit buyToyota.com today to find your nearest dealer and check out special offers. Second half shooting for Kenny with, with the nine points, but the big story right now for the Dragons are those 15 turnovers. They have to do a better job at taking care of the basketball. With the basketball. Litchfield leading by a point and over and back. Another unfair, unforced error by the Dragons, and I'm sure Coach Carson is really concerned about the way that they're turning the ball over right now. Second half shooting, uh, Litchfield five of nine. The Bulldogs three of ten. Spear. This is what he did yesterday. And he, he just needs to stay on the court. He's been in foul trouble the entire game, so he hasn't had many opportunities, but he just needs to stay on the court to give his, his team a chance to win. Two-point lead for the Bulldogs. Dragons have it. A little bit of tempo. tempo picks up. At least one of the players seem to be a little more bounced in their step all of a sudden. You're under that 10-minute mark, and you're playing for the state championship. Bulldogs. And it's on Sam Ruth. Two on Sammy. Six on the team. And inbounding of all, Dylan Cole. Low post to Kinney. He wants it back. Nice job. Nice job. I called to tie that ball up. Possession arrow in the favor of uh, Plainview Elgin Millville, so they get the ball right back. Spear will look inside. There is Shanks. Shanks, a runner off the glass. Boy, how about Nick coming through all of a sudden out of the blue? And with a nice left hand finish off the glass. Four point lead now for the Bulldogs. Here's another whistle and another foul. This one in the backcourt, and this will be a bonus. And this is good for the Dragons to be in the bonus with nine minutes to go in this game. And Spear picked up number four. So Raymond will come in, and they're counting on Eric, who is a starter, by the way, but he's got to pick up that floor uh, general spot that Spear occupies. Spear goes down to 14 points now. Tough miss. Tough miss for the Dragons. Bo Nelson. 
to Shanks, who just made a nice left-handed layup. Sam Ruth, the 6'4 center, pulled way out on top. He'll work his way down toward the bottom. We're on the perimeter, Bulldogs. Three-pointer on the way, and without hesitation, Bo Nelson suddenly hits a three. That's the first two threes of the game here. And that was a big-time shot. A big-time shot, and he felt that. As soon as he caught that basketball, he had one thing on his mind, and that was shooting, and he knocked it down. An 8-0 run for PEM. A seven-point lead for the second half. Together, we can treat and prevent injuries unique to women, young and old. Women's Orthopedic Wellness at TRIA. Our specialists assess your muscles, joints, and bones and tailor a plan just for you. From playing sports to chasing grandchildren. Wow. Start now. Stay active. What if I said that of the wood harvested in Minnesota each year, more than twice as much is grown, resulting in more than twice as many trees today as there were 50 years ago? Providing more than 30,000 jobs, quality paper, wood for building and manufacturing, and homes for millions of animals that depend on new growth. You'd probably think that we take care of the forest in Minnesota. And you'd be right. The innovative TRIA Acute Injury Clinic has fulfilled a need. Well, 96,384 needs. So when you get injured, just come in. Eight to eight, seven days a week. Go direct to the specialists. Get back to what you love to do. Back on 45 at his championship Saturday here at the Target Center. Plainview, Elgin Millville, unseated with a seven-point lead right now over Litchfield. Come the strength of a couple of three-pointers. They hadn't hit any in this whole game until the last minute. Litchfield has hit three of them. Four of them, rather, three in the first half. Again, showing a little full court pressure here to try to uh, speed the tempo of the game up. Ball knocked loose, and it'll stay a lot of bounds, and it's going to be Litchfield's basketball. Kirk Thompson. Kirk trying to make that call didn't work out so well. No, nope. <laughs> probably need to stick to coaching over here. <laughs> Kenny. Off to John Turner. To Dylan Cole. That's a good look right there, and it just is not enough for Zach Whitchurch. Boy, he had the shot he wanted to. Very nice look, just a little short. Attacking the basket, the Bulldogs. And Kenny will take it down. Give him an inch in that lane, and he will take it. That time he fed it off and right into Shanks. And Shanks hangs on to it. The Dragons are really having a tough time with turnovers right now. That shot is perfect. Boy, he went. I don't think he wanted to shoot it either, did he? He was, he was real patient. I think he was looking to pass, but the defense backed off and just left him open. So why not put it up there? He did. And That one's going to circle the rim. Tough break for Whitchurch, who had a good shot again. Zach fakes it and loses the ball on the way in off the foot of Shanks. But right now, everything is going in the Bulldogs' favor. Let's see if they take their time and get another good shot here. Aaron Groby holding the ball behind his back, just waiting for the defense to come up. As it does, Raymond back to Sam Ruth. And just keep in mind, the Bulldogs are doing all this with Spear on the bench. Seven minutes to go in the game, a nine-point lead for the Bulldogs. The fadeaway. Nope. Rebound. Fight pulled wow. down by Bo Nelson. Well, he's very aggressive. Well, he just took the ball away from the defender. He just wanted it more, and he put it up for two, two points. Great job by Nelson. Litchfield looking for that good shot, and it's a good shot, but again, it's off the front of the iron. Everything just seems a little short right now for the Dragons. They've had some good looks. Groby out to Ruth. All of a sudden, the Bulldogs playing with a ton of confidence. Back and forth all the way, and now, quickly, they have an 11-point lead. But we've watched enough games in this tournament this year already to know that there's nothing too safe. Ruth 
Not going to take the silly shot. Now they go back in, and that fadeaway jumper is what Bo Nelson loves. Well, Bo is having a great game here in the state championship, and he's just tough to guard right now. Timeout. 44-31, Bulldogs. Well, right now, everything is going to the Bulldogs' way. And Nelson is just having a big game, especially here in the second half. And it, well, this right here is what the Bulldogs are doing well. I mean, they, the defense backed off, just left the roof wide open, and he just drained the jump shot. And right now, the Dragons are in a tough position because they like to play slow on offense they like to be very deliberate on off deliberate on offense and now they're gonna have to speed the game up a little bit if they're gonna try to get back in there's only about six minutes left in this ball game so they need to play a fast they need to play a faster pace just to try to work themselves back back in this ball game because the Bulldogs right now have a fire on all cylinders a 14-0 run in the last four minutes and 12 seconds and all without their floor general, Corey Spear. First championship appearance for Plainview Elgin Millville. And they're trying to make the most of it, but there's still almost six minutes left in this game. Litchfield shot from the outside, Kenny. Just won't drop Shanks on the board, hands it back to Nelson. The Bulldogs Dogs doing a great job at just limiting the Dragons to one shot. And here comes that to defense in that trap. Raymond gives it to Nelson. Kind of awkward down there. Tried to get a shot off, but didn't have much of a chance. And then he tries to steal it back. Almost did. But Cole picks it up. And the ball is up for grabs again. And it's going to go out of bounds off of the Bulldogs. <laughs> well, that was... <laughs> Litchfield down low. Wolene got position, put it in. And he did a great job of holding the defense off. Foul. John Turning. 11 point lead for Plainview Elgin Millville. Kirk Thompson now talking to Corey Spear, who's going to come in with four fouls. He had to be careful with him. Well, the great thing, the great thing for the Bulldogs is they made a great run with Spear on the bench. So now you have your full floor general back on the court. So you should think that you're in a pretty good position right here with five minutes to go. Shanks will go out. Everybody coming in on this side. Montgomery's coming back in. There he is. There's Chase. He's six foot four. Spear in the backcourt. Double team. Balls up for grabs and timeout called for by the Bulldogs. Very heads up play by Spear. What well, about Corey? He's always got something to say. <laughs> he is a fired up smiley kid. Yes, he is. 44 to 33, 5 12 left in this game. In the second half has just been all but Bulldogs. Nelson just having a great second half, and, and so is Brook. But when you have big men that can put the ball on the floor and step out and shoot the three, that just makes it tough for the defense. And they've just been working their magic this entire second half. Bulldog Spear off to Groby. It's a dangerous pass. He chased it down, though, and Ruth has it. Now we're at five minutes and counting. Everybody touching the basketball now. Sharp, hard passes. Well, at this point in the game, they're not going to rush. They're going to make sure they get a good shot. See, now the time and possession is on their side. Shot is up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be a three-point attempt. And Nelson is just having an awesome game here in the championship. 
18 points today. 18 in the quarter, 16 yesterday. And just great body control right there. He was able to finish that after getting fouled really hard. Just nice passing by the Bulldogs to find an opening of cutting Nelson to the basket. Got it. He's on fire right now. On fire. 14-point difference. Bulldogs, four and a half minutes to go in the game. The drive to the basket is up and in by Cole. A good drive by Cole to try to keep his team in this game. There's a scramble for the basketball, and everybody's chasing it down. Where will it end up? In the hands of the Dragons. <laughs> Look at that shot. Oh, oh, falls off the edge of the rim. Almost. The fans are getting a little rally behind this day. Well, the support for these two teams is uncanny. And, and we saw the same thing in the first game, too. Just fun to be over here and hanging out and get caught up. It's even more fun you're not pulling for anybody. You can just enjoy both teams and what's happening. Well, for Dylan Cole, the look of frustration as he missed that free throw. Well, there's still plenty of time in this game for, for Litchfield to get back in it, though. They're not, they're only down by 12 points with four minutes to go. So they uh, they have really good shooters on the team. So they have a, they have plenty of opportunity to get back into this game. Bo Nelson with the ball and coming up and trying to get the steal from behind. They just have to find, they just have to find a way to stop this guy. Because Nelson is having a great game. So three falls on Dylan at the free throw line. Bo Nelson. 12 point lead for his squad here in their very first state championship game. Smooth like the other side of the pillow. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> One more time for Bo Nelson. He averages 11 points a game. He's been over average in every game in the state tournament. Well, from a coaching perspective, it's always great when you see a kid that play above his yearly average when he gets into big games like these here at the state tournament. Drive to the basket. Look Rejection at him. by Nelson. Look He's at doing him. it all. Looks like he'll be selling popcorn in the stands. <laughs> wow, nice athletic move. Montgomery hangs in the air. Can't get it to drop, but the Bulldogs get the rebound back. Groby. Ruth Montgomery Spear down to three and a half minutes now and there's a foul to stop the clock Well, they're not going to be in a hurry right now time score and possession is all in their favor time 328 to go to score they're up and they have possession of the basketball they're going to take their time there's a good look at Corey Spear big hero yesterday here for the Bulldogs They're just an outstanding particularly a first half he just singed the net yes he did that was Got his team off to a great start and was able to carry that game for that, that semifinal game all the way to a victory. Four of four from the line for Corey. Not anymore. <laughs> Whitchurch. Can't get it to drop. Here's Kenny. He'll shoot the three, and that is off the front of the iron. There's Groby. Lead pass, Spear all by himself. But give Groby the credit and the big assist on that one. Yes, he did. Great job of finding the ball, locating it, and throwing it down court. Had two teammates down there wide open. Three minutes to go. And a foul stops play. And you can see that there's a little panic right now for the Litchfield Dragons. They're down with 2.56 to go, and they have to make something happen really special here to get back into this game. There's a good look at John Turning, who played an outstanding tournament, particularly again last night. Kinney, who despite this outcome of this game, will always remember that semifinal oh. shot. Very nice finish from him to get his team here to the championship. Now let's take a break. 52 to 37, and Bo Nelson will take you to break, showing you his defensive skills.
I raise my hand to support education in Minnesota, even if my kids are no longer in school, even if my budget is tight. Know how our schools got to be the best? Parents made sacrifices because of the edge a good education gave us. Leaders took a stand because of the boost it gave our economy. Minnesotans raised their hands for Minnesota. It's my turn. Show your support for Minnesota students. Sign our pledge at iraisemyhand.com. In a time when budgets are being cut for our schools, parks, and other important programs, we believe commitment to our communities is more vital than ever. And that's why every day our people give thousands of hours to the communities we serve. 1.3 million just last year. That's what we call Bankers Hours. Wells Fargo, with you when your community needs a hand. To find out how we can help in your community, visit wellsfargo.com. It is Championship Saturday. There's a look at uh, today's attendance so far. Much more to come here tonight at that big uh, De La Salle Washburn Miller game. That'll be another game of different styles. Yes, it will be. It, uh, it should be exciting. You have some really good ball players in that game, and I'm looking forward to it starting. Well, a huge run by the Bulldogs in the second half has put them in front of Litchfield. 2.55 to go. And Groby gets the ball and is fouled from behind by Dylan Cole now as they try to get some help from maybe some missed free throws. Litchfield Dragons first third turn, uh, tournament appearance in 10 years. But, and they last time they were here they won it all. Five assists today for Groby by the way. Free throws if. Uh, if the Bulldogs continue to miss free throws, they whenever you miss free throws, you always open up an opportunity for your opponents to get back in the game. And the Dragons have superb jump shooters, so this game isn't over yet. Rebound, Dragons, right side. In the game is Tyler Larson. He can shoot from outside that arc. Turning gets the quick look, the shot on the way, front of the rim. How many shots have they had today that just hit the front of the rim on target but just a tad short? Bulldogs with the ball. Nelson's got a man alone. That is Montgomery. Here comes the dunk. He had one of those yesterday in the semifinal game. The same exact way, the same exact dunk. Turning. Battle for the ball. Bulldogs just shove it down court. There's Spear. Waits for the defense to get by and goes up for the shot. Draws the foul. Great job by Spear. He saw the two defenders running at him. And this is a dunk that this young man had in the game yesterday, Montgomery. He gets up really quick. He has a long frame. And he had that memory forever. A slam dunk in the championship game here in the Target Center. I don't think anybody is sitting down that came here from Plainview, Elgin, Millville after that. Unless they just pulled a muscle in that quick jump to the top after he brought that one down. <laughs> Man, they are going nuts over there. Spear trying to hit a free throw here, and he does. 55-37, two minutes to go in the state title game. Kenny back to turning. Whitchurch trying to get a shot off, but that height of Plainview Old Jamilville is hard to shoot over. A pretty good height out there. There's Kenny. Dishes. That one off the glass won't drop. Bo Nelson with the rebound. Got three white jerseys around him. Finds Spear. Ruth. Groby. And that ball is on its way to the cheaper seats here. Actually, the more expensive seats. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a great job by the Bulldogs moving the ball around, trying to avoid the foul. 55 to 37, and now John Carlson will make some substitutions right here. And he comes off and shakes the hands of his players. Yeah. What a great coach he is. Well, I know those guys are disappointed that they didn't win the championship, but. There's no reason for them to hang their head. They're, they're an awesome team, and they gave 110% effort in every game that they played here. 
Yeah, I'm not so sure anybody thought Litchfield would be in this state championship game. But they came through and had a, just a d dynamic game yesterday. But something in the second half was clicking for the Bulldogs. Yeah. And, and the Bulldogs played extremely well here in the second half. Hit a lot of nice shots. Got third, second and third opportunities for themselves. And played great defense on the other end as well. Well, the minute and a half, Anderson Ayers gets in the ball game. Trevor Park is going to carry that ball up for the Dragons. Puts it down in the corner. Cameron Sunmark into the ball game. Quinn Anderson. And the ball is going to be turned over. And the Bulldogs will have it. Plainview Elgin Millville's Cole Stilo will inbound the ball. Kirk Thompson probably starting to relax. Stomach not hurting quite so much all of a sudden from nerves. Well, he's not smiling yet over there, though. He's still he's still in uh, warrior mode. Ball picked up and put up by Alex Slauson. And it sails out of bounds. With a minute eight. Litchfield will have it. Ayers throws it in. That's Park. Guarded by Swanson. Out of the top to David Brown. And then the shot comes out. And a rebound. Still, boy, that shot will not go in. Park tried it. With the rebound, Zach Zeibel. Alex Swanson. It's Zeibel. Back out to Brandon. Bennett and a couple more substitutions coming in. Skyler Thompson will come in. And also coming in for Litchfield, Cody Wilson. Play of the game is being brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Well, this is just nice ball movement by the Bulldogs. They did that in the entire second half, and that was a key to them being so effective in the second half here. Tanner Lammers feeds it back over to Zeibel, and Zach will dish it on over to Bennett. And he stepped out of bounds. I think he had both feet out of bounds on that play there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to stay tidal, you get, tend to get pretty fired up about it. <laughs> Down to the final 30 seconds. Trevor Park got a double pick there at the top. Feeds it back over to David Brown and down underneath and trying to go for the shot was Cody Wilson but he was hammered. He has a chance to get his name in the books here. Two free throws coming up. Cody Wilson he's a senior. Let's check your player of the game brought to you by Warner Stellion Appliance a Minnesota family owned business since 1954. Well that guy right there Nelson he just played like a beast today especially in the second half he was just dominate inside hitting jump shots from the outside blocking shots rebounding he had a game of his life here in the state championship game here on championship Saturday Plainview Elgin Millville with the basketball Cole Strelo going down what a beautiful block that was down underneath Quinn Anderson the shot is up won't go with the ball, the Bulldogs one more time. And as it rolls around, there's going to be a state championship trophy on its way to Plainview, Elgin Millville. Fifty-four to forty-five, and Nick coming up here in just a few minutes will be the trophy presentations. 
Litchfield Dragons and the Plainview Elton Millville Bulldogs. And it was a great back and forth game all through the first half, early in the second half, and then the Bulldogs came alive for Richard. Yes, they did. They had an awesome second half, and that pro propelled them to this state championship. And for Litchfield, they just had a tough second half, just couldn't put the ball in the basket. But those kids played extremely hard. And I know they're disappointed right now, but there's no reason for them to hold their head down. They're a great school and has it was a great basketball team. Well, we're gonna have the presentation of trophies and medals in just a second. Look at the ejection off Blitzfield's team, but again, I think it's somebody told you earlier they'd be playing for the state championship. Yeah, against Plainview Elgin Millville. I don't know if anybody would have predicted this, so it's really fun to watch it. And of course, they're coming off that very emotional win last night. Yeah. Let's go down courtside and check in with David Wright for the uh, presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we're going to present the 10 member Wells Fargo All Tournament team, chosen by the sports writers and sportscasters covering the tournament. These students have distinguished themselves with their athletic excellence, leadership, team commitment, and exceptional sportsmanship. Presenting the trophies for the Wells Fargo All Tournament team at center court is A.J. Osterman of Wells Fargo. He will be assisted by Dave Stad, Executive Director of the High School League, and now the 2012 Class 2A Boys Basketball All Tournament team. From Braham guard Tyler Vaughn. From Braham Center, Cameron Brond. From Burham, guard Jordan Broom. From Burham, guard Jordan Cressop. From Litchfield, forward Mitch Moline. <laughs> From Litchfield, guard John Turney. <laughs> From Litchfield, forward Zach Kitty. <laughs> From Plainville, Elgin Millville, guard Corey Spear. From Plainville, Elgin Millville, center, Sam Roof. And from Plainville, Elgin Millville, guard, Bo Nelson. Wells Fargo to Ben South State High School. They congratulate all members of the 2012 Class 2A Boys Basketball All-Tournament Team. Let's give a big hand. Today in the third place game over at Concordia University, Perham defeated Braham 52 to 46. The fourth place trophy was presented to Braham, and Perham was awarded bronze medals and the third place trophy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is time now to award the silver medals and the gold medals. The award ceremony will be conducted by the representatives of the Minnesota State High School League Board of Directors, Perry Odlin of Chisago Lakes, Rick Bleichner of Beckenridge, Jill Lopal of Duluth, Mindy Sparvey of Belle Plain, Luann Wagner of St. Francis. They will be assisted by tournament director Kevin Merkel. Silver medals in the Class 2A second place trophy will now be awarded to Litchfield High School. And we ask the players, managers, and coaches come forward as your names are called. Zach Whitchurch. Trevor Park. Dylan Cole. John Turning. Tyler Larson. Cameron Sunmar. Zach Kinney. <laughs> Quinn Anderson. 
Joe Metzen. Jordan Redepenne. Jesse Rowe. Cal Dollarshell. Riley Potter. Philip Hansen. David Brown. Mitch Walleen. Anderson Ayers. Cody Wilson. Student managers, Mark Dingman and Devin Zeppelin. Assistant coaches, Matt Drager and Justin Whitrock. of the second place, Litchfield Dragons come forward and get your trophy for the final record of 26 and five, the Litchfield Dragons. Ladies and gentlemen, the Minnesota State Class 2A boys basketball champion is Plainview Elgin Melville. We ask the members of the team, the coaches, managers, coaches, come forward as your names are called. Chase Montgomery! Brendan Bennett! Eric Raymond! Alex Slauson! Nelson Finney. And Logan Wick. Assistant coaches, Jason Herber. And Andy Bernard. Head coach, Kirk Thompson. of the Class 2A champion, playing Bill Elgin, Bill Elgin, Bill Elgin, come here and get your trophy. With a record of 27 at 6. The Class 2A champion has been playing Bill Elgin, Bill Bulldogs 
come up to Minneapolis and decide to go home with a first place show. If we're going to make the trip, get the championship game, might as well take home the hard work. Congratulations to them and their victory over Litchfield. Next up tonight, De La Salle and Minneapolis Washburn. Much more to come on the post game show here on Championship Saturday. Xfinity has all the latest episodes online, and their internet's like crazy fast.